Hello and welcome to the video which is going to look at the topic of real life accounting. This video is going to look in more detail at the statement of financial position and the statement of comprehensive income and take into account different factors such as prepayments and accruals. So we have this term called an accounting period. The accounting period is basically the length of time when a business will set its accounts for. So typically, what do you think the length of time is that businesses produce their accounts? I'm assuming you would have said yearly. That is a typical accounting period. Now, it's up to a business to choose when they set their accounts in that period. However, I've used this example the 6th of April. That is the financial year. However, a business can choose to run its accounts from any period it wishes to do so. So what do I mean by that? Well, the 2019-2020 accounts, for example, would run from April the 6th, 2019, all the way through to April the 5th, 2020. Then the 2020 accounts would run from April the 6th, 2020, all the way through to April the 5th, 2021, and so on. And this period keeps running. Because a business doesn't shut down at the end of each period, but for the sake of reporting and business purposes, we need to obviously financially be able to end the year and start another one. And this is what maybe makes things a little bit more complex than what you might understand from a textbook. So let's look at this example. What's going to happen if the business had credit from a supplier? Remember, credit is giving you time to pay. So the business purchases £5,000 worth of stock from the supplier on April the 4th. However, it doesn't need to pay the invoice until May the 4th. What period are we going to record that transaction on? Is it going to be on the previous accounts or the new accounts? Because we're crossing that line of April the 6th. Well, what you actually have here in the term of accountancy is something called an accrual. Now, an accrual is an expense that's paid after the period it relates to. And that's exactly what we've got here. That... This actually relates to a purchase that's been made in the previous accounting period, but will actually be paid in the new accounting period. So we need to account for that. So what we do here is we need to record this accrual actually on the trading period that it relates to, which obviously would be the 2019-2020 accounts rather than the 2020-2021 accounts. So what we need to do is add the £5,000 onto our purchases section of the Statement of Comprehensive Income because it was a purchase that we made in that trading period. But, and this is really important, we haven't actually paid for it yet, and we need to make sure that we record that we've not paid for that purchase. So, we need to actually then record it as a current liability. Now remember, current liabilities are debts that we have to pay within the short term, within a year ideally. So what we need to do then is add the £5,000 to our current liability section, on our statement of financial position because then we're showing that we still owe £5,000 out in the short term that's got to be paid out and that then would actually transfer over from the previous period to the current period showing that this transaction rolls over and we've accounted for it in the correct way. So what's actually happened is that £5,000 was added to the statement of comprehensive income to show that it was an expense in that 2019-2020 period but £5,000 was also added to the current liabilities on the statement of financial position for our 2020-2021 accounts because it's currently unpaid and we need to pay it. So here's another example. What's going to happen if the business pays its mobile phone bill one month in advance which is typically the case? So for example the business pays for May's phone bill on the 1st of April. But it actually isn't going to use that phone in theory until the 1st of May. And that's a £100 bill. Where does the business record this transaction? Because it's actually paying for something that is not yet used. Well, that's called a prepayment. And a prepayment is a payment that's made in advance of the expense being due. So, we need to record again this on the trading period that it's related to. So, I would need to remove the £100 from my expenses section or in my mobile phone bill section from my statement of comprehensive income because it's not related to this trading period, it's related to the next trading period. But, because it's already been paid, 
I need to then add £100 onto my current assets. Now, the reason I need to add it to my current assets, because remember that current assets are things that can be turned into cash within a year, and this will be turned into cash within a year, because in theory, it's going to be used next month. So I need to add that onto my current assets of my statement of finance position, showing that I'm due to get £100 coming in in the next short term. So now is a good time to have a go yourself and see if you really understand this topic. So B has produced for you the following statement of comprehensive income at the end of the year. However, it's got some errors. So you can see the statement of comprehensive income on the left hand side and B needs to pay rent of £2,000 a month in advance. You need to amend this income statement to reflect the change. Pause the video while you do this and then unpause it while I'll show you the answer. So hopefully you have first amended the rent section. You've taken it down from 14,000 down to 12,000 because it related to a payment which is another trading period. But then you need to amend the total expenses section, changing that to 44,000. And then you need to change the net profit and actually increase it to 16,000 because the net profit actually has got bigger as a result of this. That's really important to do. That's the amendments you need to make to the statement. Now, of course, B's also given you the statement of financial position for the end of the year, but it's got some errors in it. And as you can see, B's got to account now for this rent. So I want you to pause the video in a minute while you would make those changes to that statement as well. So hopefully you have either created in a new column for rent in the current asset section or you have just increased the total current assets so you would have added the two thousand pound in which then would have increased your total current assets to thirty five thousand that would have affected your net current assets because remember your current assets minus your current liabilities and it would have also impacted on the overall value of the company so the total assets less your current liabilities or in simple terms it's your fixed assets total plus your net current assets that would have then increased to sixty thousand and five hundred pounds if you've done that correct well done you've actually amended that statement correctly let's have a look at another example so B has given you the following statement of comprehensive income. So we're back to what we got before. Only B has forgotten about the 60 days credit from the supplier for £5,000. You need to amend the statement to reflect that change. Pause the video while you do that and then unpause it to see the answer. So I'm hoping that you've been able to do that quite simply by increasing the cost of sales by £5,000. Because remember, this relates to this trading period. So it needs to go into the trading period it's related to. Now, that obviously is going to affect your gross profit, which you needed to amend, which then, of course, would also affect your overall net profit that you had to amend as well. So remember that by making that amendment, you've got to change those other elements as well. So, of course, B has given you the statement of financial position for the same period with the same problem that B's now got to account for this 60 days credit from the supplier. So I want you now to try and make that amendment and pause the video whilst you do that. So I'm hoping that you've been able to do this one fairly straightforward. You're going to increase your trade payables by £5,000. Why is that? Because it's a current liability. These are people who have given you credit and you've got to pay them within 60 days. So that's within a year. So you've got to include it on there. You've not paid them at the moment. You're showing that you still owe that money. By increasing that to £9,500, that is going to change your net current assets. Because remember, current assets minus current liabilities gives you that. And then, of course, it's also going to change the value of the overall company, your total assets, less your current liabilities. So you'd have to amend that as well. If you've done that, if you've got it correct, not only do you understand accountancy, not only do you understand accruals and prepayments, but you actually understand how to amend these documents. That's a really key skill to understand and a really complex skill to understand. So if you've got that, you should be buzzing for business. Just like me, don't forget to subscribe, follow, share and like all of the videos that you see on B Business B. And until next time, keep buzzing.